everyone. How are we this fine day? Great. I love it. I'm going to call the Board of Supervisors to order. Ms. Relay, may I have a roll call, please? You may. Supervisor Giomi? Here. Supervisor White? Here. Supervisor Jones? Here. Supervisor Schutte? Here. Mayor Bagwell? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you so much. We're now going to move on to the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would be honored if Todd Jennings would please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. We're now on a public comment. Is there anyone that would like to make public comment other than I'll just start with a hearty uh, thank you. I can tell looking out in this group that most of you uh, helped us. Um, have a successful election, and I think on behalf of this entire board, uh, we just really want to thank you for all your vol volunteers, whether you were paid or not. The workload is tremendous, the pressure is tremendous, and of course, the Carson City uh, residents, great job, right? Great job. <laughs> so, Mr. Jennings. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Madam Mayor, Supervisors, Lady of the Hour. <laughs> I'm going to take liberties here and speak on behalf of the election workers. Election workers trained by Aubrey and her professional staff, Miguel, Nicole, Emily, Roe, Sylvia. Trained and supported, and to say appreciated is to understate it. Aubrey, you gave us the opportunity to effectively be part of something bigger than ourselves something no one can ever doubt the legitimacy of, and something that contributes to the survivability of our democratic republic. While I speak on behalf of the poll workers, I clearly did not take up a collection for the flowers. <laughs> that being said, it is with heartfelt gratitude that I present you these flowers along with the laurel and hearty handshake. <laughs> Aubrey, in all seriousness, we wish you all the best for your future with many blessings to come. It has been our honor to work for you and with you and your team. You set a high standard for the future. Godspeed. Oh, very nice. That was very nice. That was very nice. Very nice. Okay, next on the list, I have uh, Wayne Thorley. Thank you, Mayor Bagwell. Good morning, uh, Mayor, members of the board. Um, my name is Wayne Thorley. I'm the former Deputy Secretary of State for Elections with the Secretary of State's office. Uh, today, I'm here before you as a private citizen, resident of Carson City uh, of 15 years. Uh, although I don't work full time in election administration anymore, I wanted to still be part of, of the election, so volunteered as a poll worker this year. And I just wanted to echo all the previous comments about um, how successfully run the election was. Um, what I saw in, is an election that would complied with all the state and federal election laws, the laws which, with which I'm intimately familiar with. And the residents of Carson City can have confidence uh, in the outcome of the election and that the election was run in compliance with all applicable laws. And I uh, just want to say thank you to uh, Clerk Recorder Roylet for allowing me to be part of this and for uh, uh, carrying out a successful election. You just couldn't get it out of your system, huh? I couldn't. <laughs> Once you get bit by the bug. <laughs> well, we're so you. happy that you were able to help thank us. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how about Darcy? Good morning, Mayor and the Board. Uh, my name is Darcy Johnson. I am a resident of Carson City, a registered voter. Uh, I'm an attorney recently retired from the Legislative Council Bureau. I've worked as a volunteer for the last three elections for Aubrey and her staff. By the way, for those who don't know, we volunteers are paid an hourly wage. It's not a lot, but I'm sure it helps with recruiting and retaining the workers. I do not pretend to speak on behalf of my fellow volunteer workers, however, 
I am here to applaud and compliment Aubrey and her staff. They are remarkably competent. They do their work with care, with precision, and with enthusiasm. I do not say this lightly. They handled any and all problems, glitches, or even complaints promptly and with professionalism. It was obvious to me that their main goal was to make sure every eligible citizen of Carson City was able to vote and to ensure the quality and integrity of the process and the system. It was my honor to work with and for them. They deserve thanks from a grateful community, and I urge the board to certify the election results this morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. The rest of the people on this list have indicated no. I think they're just signing in, but in case I'm misinterpreting or there's anyone else, is there any further public comment? Well, then let's just get to the business of the day. How about we work on discussion and possible action regarding the canvas of the vote for the 2022 general election held on November 8th, 2022. Ms. Rillette? It's very hard to follow that. Um, <laughs> looking up at this room, thank you. Thank you for showing up. That's that's awesome. Um, Aubrey Rillette, Carson City Clerk Recorder for the record, and Miguel Camacho, Chief Deputy Clerk here to my right. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank the following. I know we've just done a lot of talking, um, but I personally would like to make some thanks as well. Obviously, my staff, uh, Emily Toops, Nicole Fay, Ro Martinoni, Sylvia Yasumoto, Michelle Peterson, and of course, Miguel Camacho. They are there for whatever is needed. They have an insane ability to run the polling location, manage thousands of mail ballots, answer hundreds of phone calls daily, receive and respond timely to emails and correspondence, and then ask me at the end of the day, what else can I do? Uh, Carson City is extremely blessed to have the dedicated staff that we have. Uh, they're willing to put the time in and then some to make things work. They truly do go above and beyond. Uh, as you can see, Carson City has some amazingly dedicated election workers who show up ready to do anything. Um, they should be recognized for all their hard work. We couldn't do it without them. I personally consider all of you family. We work long, hard hours together. Many of you have trained me from coming up when I worked under Sue Merriweather. Um, I can't express the appreciation I have for your patience with me and your willingness to endure me learning <laughs> as well as me taking on the role as the clerk recorder. Uh, Carson City as well has many departments that helped and they should be recognized. IT was with us bright and early. We got to the polling location on election day at 430 they were there by five uh, with smiles on and, and um, support, enthusiasm as well. Facilities, public works, Eric at the community center and his staff, the sheriff's office, city manager's office, all of them played a, an integral role in making this election work. I would like to specifically thank Nick Artem, and I'm probably going to slaughter these names, but Stephen Wood, Lexi Philippi, and Christy Sanchez. Alana Mills, and of course my husband, who came out to brave the snow and help direct traffic on election day. Um, they came at a very last minute call, and I appreciate that. The election is a citywide event, and it was nice to see the city come out and be a part of it and see firsthand how many hurdles and obstacles have to be addressed to make it a success. It's not just a pop-up event, and it requires months of preparation in my opinion, it should include city management as a whole. There's a lot of hurdles that we have to overcome and think about um, blizzards on the day of the election. Um, you know, you've got a plan and you put it in place and something happens. And I think it's really, it was really great to see the city come together and provide solutions when we're so focused on making the polling location flow how we have it in our mind. It's not easy to change the flow of a polling location in a 20 minute decision. Um, it affects everything about that election. So I, I appreciated the city manager um, and deputy city manager working with us to, to come up with a solution for that. Um, and then I would also like to take a moment to congratulate the Carson City Clerk recorder elect Scott Cohen. Um, he'll be coming into a very busy office at a very busy time. Um, so I wanted to take a moment for that. Now to get into the election, um, some of the following are just some quick facts. Uh, Carson City's turnout was 63.29%. It 
if you compare that to the 2018 midterm turnout, that was 72.37%. I believe the drop is, again, just due to the automatic voter registration. Um, we have a lot more voters on the rolls than we did in 2018. Um, we had 185 individuals who same day registered throughout early voting as well as election day, of which we were able to count 179 of those. So that was successful as well. 205 mail ballots required a signature cure, of which 115 were successfully cured. That was a lot of help from the news media, from supervisors. Everyone was all hands on deck to try to reach those voters and get them to come in and cure their signature. So we really appreciate the help with that. It's hard to get everyone's attention. Um, a lot of people vote by mail because they're going to be gone. So they're not really anticipating that follow up that they need to do. So as as the elections go in that direction, I just hope that voters take our calls and our letters seriously so that they can respond and get their, their ballot cured. Um, what I found was really exciting is we had 1,687 mail ballots that were returned undeliverable. I know that seems high, but in the primary, we had 3,895 returned undeliverable. Because our office does do regular voter list maintenance, we were able to drop that by about 2,200 ballots. So I believe that we will see as mail balloting goes that we're going to get this information and the voter list is going to naturally clean. It's not going to be perfect. It's still going to take action. But I think this is a clear demonstration that we were able to get that information, we were able to act on it, and we were able to work with those voters so that we didn't have to mail them a ballot. Um, I understand the frustration of the delayed results. This, this is a topic that um, it frustrates me as well, administratively. It frustrates all of us. But we are following current Nevada law. We, we have to accept mail ballots through the fourth day after the election, which in this election landed on a Saturday. Um, we also had Veterans Day, which was that Friday. So there were, there's a lot of things that need to be worked out with that. Um, but we are required under Nevada law to accept mail ballots postmarked on or before election day through that fourth day after the election. Additionally, same day registration cures because of the holiday, their cure deadline um, is normally the Friday after the election. It was moved to that Monday after the election to mirror the regular mail ballot cure deadline. So there was nothing we could really do to finalize any count until after that Monday deadline. Um, because we had to wait till five o'clock to get all the signature cures. So there wasn't any final reporting we could do. Tuesday, the state runs um, a statewide vetting process as to the same day registrants to make sure that they haven't voted in another county. So we have to wait for that process as well. Um, all of this adds to that result delivery to the community. And I, I know it's frustrating we hear about it and, and I, all I can say is take it to the legislature, be vocal about it and make sure that they understand what it does because we have to comply with that law. Um, we also have to balance how we report. And this is kind of an administrative nightmare. Um, it's not that we want to not tell you how many ballots we have. It's that we have to be careful because we're trying to also maintain the secrecy of a ballot. If I only get 10 ballots in the mail, I can't report those 10 because then, you, then the secrecy of those voters is going to be lost. So we, we really do try to balance it out to where we have enough to report, we have enough to justify bringing the board in to process those ballots and enough to get that information out to you. We tried really hard this election to maintain the website um, with some information that would tell you, hey, we're going to anticipate reporting again on this day. Uh, but again, it's hard. It's kind of asking us to foresee the future because we don't know how many ballots we're going to get in the mail. Um, so we, we did our best to get that information out to you. There's always room for improvement, but we're also running 24 miles, well, 24 hours a day, not 24 miles an hour, probably 100 miles an hour. Um, and then I just wanted to also touch on the voter credit. So Carson City has, has always applied voter credit at the certification or after. And this is just because we're, we're balancing out, we're running all of our reports, so the voter credit isn't applied until that end. Um, we did apply it yesterday. It was sent up to the state. It may be a few days before it shows up, but we urge you to contact our office. If you have a question about your ballot, if you have a question whether your mail ballot was accepted or received even, 
call our office because we are the main source of information and we will tell you yes or no. Our voter registration software is right there. We can look you up. We answer all of our calls. Um, my staff, I don't know how they do it, but they, they do. They get to every single call. And then finally, as this is my last election as the Carson City Clerk Recorder, I just want to say that I have appreciated the opportunity to serve all of you, work with all of you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to leave that there. It's been an amazing experience. I've learned a lot. Uh, it's definitely been out of my comfort zone. Um, but it has, it has taught me a lot of what I can do and, and what the community can do as a whole. It's pretty amazing. So with that, I respectfully submit the canvas of the vote for the November 8th, 2022 general election to the Board of Supervisors for certification. Does any member of the board have a question or comment? I'll throw a comment Supervisor out there. Um, thank you, ma'am, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, <clears throat> all of us have watched the process, watched all of you go through the process, um, have been amazed by the quality and quantity of work you do. Um, and by you, I mean all of you. Um, <clears throat> you know, in the end, for me, it's uh, about getting it right, not getting it fast. And because we want every vote to count. And you guys did that. And we really can't ask for any more than that. Um, I did get one phone call, and I wanted to share this with uh, the volunteers. I, I got a phone call <clears throat> early this week from a senior citizen resident, and yes, we talked about all, all the legalities, all the technical components, all of the mechanics of voting. Um, but this person wanted to compliment the staff on none of that. She wanted to compliment the staff on your compassion. Um, she was crying on the phone to me. <laughs> I'm almost crying now telling you this story. She just was so enamored with the way she was treated by you. And in the end, that's what it's about. So thank you. Before we take formal action, I have to do another thing. Is there any public comment additional? Well, then I am going to take the honor of the motion. It's the, the privilege of the chair. So I move to accept the canvas of the vote for the November 8th, 2022 general election as presented. I second as well. I don't know if there's a technical way I can do that, but seconded by all. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carried unanimously. Well done. And, and I didn't have a chance, but to all the candidates, successful or not, thank you for running. I think that this whole process doesn't start or must start with that, people willing to serve. So I see uh, Molly Walt, congratulations for the school board. But again, I congratulate each and every person that was willing to serve their community, right? It's, it's equally important. And I'm um, pretty fortunate in Carson City, the caliber of the candidates and the caliber of the, just the community itself. So thank you. I would thought I'd better put that on the record. And again, congratulations. Okay, this meeting is almost done, but I have to do the technical legal stuff. One final public comment period. Anybody? Denny, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Mayor Bagwell, uh, supervisors. I saw some of you, uh, staff and different people. Put your name on the record, please. I'm sorry, Denny French, Carson City, Nevada. I just want to thank everybody too. And while I didn't call in and let anyone know how appreciative I was of people's help during the vote, there were some things that I had trouble with with the machine. And people didn't look at me like I was a dummy. They came and took care of that issue and, and helped me on my way and made it a very uh, pleasant experience. And I appreciated while I was in line how well-mannered we all seemed to be uh, under the circumstances. But thank you all very much. And thank you.
Did you have to walk five miles through the snow and the rain? I, mean, I couldn't help it. Isn't that the school bus? Uh, you don't have to <laughs> no, no. Uphill, <laughs> barefoot. It, it, it wasn't quite five miles. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Is there any further public comment? Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen of Carson City, we have an election that is done. Yay.